Hey everybody, welcome to another AATRN talk. This week we have uh, Yuichi Ike from the uh, University of Tokyo, who will be talking to us about RIPSnet, fast and robust estimation of persistent homology for point clouds. Thank you, Yuichi. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, and first, I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. So today I'd like to talk about RIPSnet, which is a fast and robust estimation for persistent homology for point cloud. Uh, this is a joint work with these people with, in the collaborative research with India and Fujitsu. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the, the outline of my talk. First, I will talk about persistent homology. There, uh, I, will, I will consider how to extract the the topology of data uh, as what is called persistent diagrams. Uh, we, we are especially interested in um, point cloud data. So uh, I will explain some filtrations associated with point clouds. And I also discuss uh, some vectorization methods of persistent diagrams. In the second part, which is the main part of this talk, uh, I will explain our LIPSnet. Uh, after explaining two limitations of exact computation persistent diagrams, we introduce uh, a neural network architecture for estimating persistent diagrams. <clears throat> then we show that LIPSnet has some good stability properties. And finally, we present some experimental results. Okay, so let's start. Uh, the first I will uh, briefly discuss persistent homology as a reminder. So uh, the first topological data analysis, maybe you all know the TDA for short is a method to extract the topological feature of data, which was developed in 21st century, basically. <clears throat> so for example, let us consider these two point crowd. So uh, they seem different to us because the left hand side, this one has no hole, uh, with one connected component. On the other hand, this uh, point cloud had one four, one loop here. So they seem different to us. So roughly speaking, TDA aims to extract such topological features. But uh, however, the problem is that these point clouds are discrete and have no topology themselves. So question is how to extract the topology of a discrete point cloud. Okay, so the naive uh, idea is to take the union of the of boards, cross the boards centered at a point, uh, data point, and consider the topology of the union of boards. Yes, but however, there is another problem in, in this approach. So if we take the radius value as in this figure, like this, then, uh, <clears throat> then we cannot extract the desired uh, topology of this point cloud. Actually, the, uh, there are many uh, connected components in, on this side. However, the topology should be uh, connected on this side. And what is worse is uh, this side. So we can see here a uh, large loop, but the extracted topology uh, sees, sees this small group instead. So, uh, yeah, so the, if we take uh, the radius value as in this figure, the, the extracted topology is what we wanted. However, uh, the, we do not know how to adjust the radius value beforehand for given data set. So the second and the most important uh, <clears throat> idea in TDA is to consider all radius value, not fixing it. <clears throat> so uh, that is uh, enlarge the radius value from zero to infinity and track the evolution of topology. That is the idea. <clears throat> so by tracking the evolution, we can see that this small uh, loop vanishes soon, while this uh, big loop, which is essentially 
uh, essential topology uh, persist longer. So in this way, we can distinguish uh, the essential topological feature and noise. So this is this method is called the persistent homology. Okay. So, <clears throat> so mathematically, uh, we use the notion of filtration to study evolution of the topology. Here we recall that the asymplectic complex is a collection K of a uh, subset of a finite set B satisfying uh, the, this condition. That is, if sigma is a simplex and tau is uh, a phase of sigma, then tau is also simplex. <coughs> okay, a filtration of a simple simple complex is uh, just an increasing family of uh, subcomplexes of K that is increasing and also uh, satisfy that the union of uh, these is equal to K. <clears throat> okay, this is an example of filtrations. So at time zero, uh, there uh, appear three vertices and one edge. And time one, uh, two more edge appears like this. And finally, time two, uh, uh, this triangle appears, right? So this is equivalent to uh, a function on simplicial complex satisfying some condition. So given a filtration, we can consider uh, the family of uh, homology and uh, induced linear maps, uh, which comes from inclusion map, <laughs> like this. So this family is called uh, persistent homology of filtration script K. <clears throat> Uh, yes, and uh, this is used to, uh, how to say, to extract the topology of data. <laughs> so in order to extract the information from topo uh, persistent homology, we often use the notion of persistence diagram. So this one, which encode uh, the birth and death time of each homology class that is logical uh, features. Uh, this is uh, 2D plot uh, uh, essentially. So the we plot bus time to uh, in the first coordinate and the this time in second coordinate for each uh, topological feature. So I will explain uh, uh, persistent diagram using uh, this uh, filtration again. So at time zero, uh, uh, there appear two connected components like this. And one of them uh, appear, uh, sorry, the vanishes at time one because it merges to another. So we plot for a uh, connected component that is zero homology uh, class. Uh, we plot this point. So that is it, bus, uh, it is born at time zero and vanishes at time one. On the other hand, uh, the other uh, connected component persists uh, forever. So we plot this point, zero infinity, right? This is zero persistence diagram for this connect uh, filtration. And uh, for loop that is uh, first persistent homology, uh, it appears uh, this loop at time one, and it balances time two because it filled in uh, by this uh, triangle. So we plot uh, point here, one, two, four uh, loops that is fast, uh, pass, this is pa fast persistence diagram of this filtration. <coughs> okay. So if uh, a topological feature has short persistence, uh, then the associated point in persistence diagram is near the diagonal. So hence, in a persistent diagram, a point near the diagonal uh, can be regarded as noise, while a point uh, far from the diagonal uh, is an essential topological feature. Right. So in this way, we can distinguish uh, noise and topology, uh, essential topological feature. Right. So uh, <clears throat> from a point cloud, uh, which we especially interested in, <clears throat> we can construct 
several types of filtrations as follows. The first one is uh, check filtration. So we set the vertex check to be P. And for R, <coughs> a subset x0 to xk forms a simplex if uh, the intersection of the closed balls centered at x size uh, is non empty, like this. So uh, uh, for three points, the example is here, right? In other words, we consider uh, the family of the closed balls and uh, take the nerve of this family. That is a check complex, <clears throat> right? As seen in this video, enlarging R, this uh, uh, family forms a filtration. <clears throat> Another filtration is a lip filtration, uh, where x0 to xk forms a simplex if uh, any pair of closed balls has uh, no empty intersection. This is simplified version of the check filtration. <clears throat> and we also we can also define alpha filtration like this. So first consider Voronoi cell associated with x. And then set W to be the intersection cross the ball and Voronoi cell. And the finally, we set alpha PK to the nerve of the family of W. That is uh, uh, alpha filtration. So by nerve theorem, uh, we find that check and alpha uh, complex have the same topology as the union of balls. That is, geometric realization of these uh, are homotopy equivalent to the union. So, or in this way, we can investigate the topology uh, using these uh, combinatorial objects uh, by uh, using computer. Okay. <clears throat> so, one of the advantages of top persistent homology. Uh, or TDA is its robustness to noise. <clears throat> so actually, persistent homology uh, only extracts the topological features of data. So its output, that is uh, persistent diagrams, are expected to stable for small perturbation in point, point data points, right? So in order to express the stability, we introduce uh, a distance between persistent diagrams uh, for, for the definition, we first note that the number of persistent diagrams is not necessarily the same as in this figure. <clears throat> Moreover, uh, the points near the diagonal are less important than uh, those um, far from the diagonal, right, as, as I said. So to address these issues, um, we take the we take partial matching of points like this, uh, and and uh, how to say uh, and <clears throat> match the rest uh, to to the projection to the uh, diagonal like this. So more precisely, we uh, define as follows. <clears throat> so persistent diagrams D1 and D2, we consider a by bijection M, D1 union the diagonal, and D from, from D1 to the plus diagonal to D2 plus diagonal. <clears throat> and then a uh, soup of uh, the infinity distance of matched pairs like this. And finally, take the infima to define bottleneck distance between D1 and D2. This is a uh, should distance between D1 and D2. Then using this bottleneck distance, we have the following theorem. <clears throat> so for two points crowd uh, x and y in Rd, uh, we denote by uh, dx and dy uh, uh, their persistent diagrams use, uh, with uh, check of lips filtration. Then we have that the bottleneck distance between dx and dy, dy is at most the Hausdorff distance of x and y. That is the stability theorem for point crowd. <clears throat> so it, this means that the persistent diagram 
is stable for small perturbation on voice cloud. <laughs> yes. But however, the if we change a, a single point in X to another, then uh, this Hausdorff distance uh, easily gets larger, as you know. So indeed, uh, we will see later that persistent diagrams are still sensitive to outer layer. <coughs> that is, uh, that, that would be a problem in practical use. So, so <coughs> any questions so far? It's okay. <coughs> okay, <coughs> good. <laughs> so then how to use TDA in practical analysis, practical uh, data analysis? So this is a typical pipeline of analysis with persistent homology. So given data uh, such as point clouds, uh, generated by simulation or a graph or image data also, we first associate some filtrations by some method. <clears throat> then we uh, compute persistent diagram with some software. <clears throat> then use these persistent diagrams as an as a input of machine learning. Yes, in many cases, and uh, we vectorize persistent diagram to input machine learning because the input of the usual machine learning algorithm should be vectored. So uh, now I will explain some vectorization method a little bit. <clears throat> so here I will explain uh, two uh, major methods which are mainly uh, interested in, we, we are mainly interested in this work. <clears throat> Uh, the first one is persistent image. Uh, for a uh, given point, given persistent diagram D, uh, we first apply this tra linear transform T uh, to push down point so like this, like this, that to, to convert it. Then we take the weighted sum of Gaussian function like this. Uh, foods uh, center at a T point in TD. Right. Uh, and uh, taking uh, some region A and its partition uh, PI, and um, persistence image is defined to be uh, the family of uh, integrated value of rho D uh, over PI. So we often take A to be a rectangle and PI, some, some grid PI, then uh, it is visualized like this. <clears throat> okay, so this is essentially uh, the kernel density estimator of persistent diagram. And another uh, popular method is persistent landscape, which is defined as uh, the case max of this function which means essentially that we draw triangle to, uh, to uh, diag uh, diagonal like this, and then take case max. That is partition landscape. Okay. So um, actually the partition homology and partition diagram have been used in many fields in various types of data, in particular, it has been effectively used uh, for analysis of point clouds data in material science. So here I just explain one pioneering application, although there are too many. <clears throat> so in this a bit old paper, uh, they studied estimation, uh, so estimation of the temperature uh, that silica uh, changes from liquid to gas. <clears throat> the consider point cloud that indicate atomic configuration of SiO2, then from this point cloud, it is hard to distinguish uh, them into liquid or grass. However, uh, by transforming them into point cloud, uh, sorry, the persistent diagram like this, we can easily find the difference between them. So in this paper, they propose to use kernel method uh, to vectorize persistent diagrams and estimated the grass uh, transition temperature. And I also uh, remarked that uh, 
TDA or persistent diagram has also been effectively applied protein analysis as well. <coughs> so this is uh, the first part. So any questions? Okay. So the, the I will move to main part, LipsNet. <coughs> so in practical use of uh, persistent uh, diagram, one usually use the pipeline I presented before, that is from point clouds, uh, we construct persistent diagram, then vectorize them. However, there are two major limitations in this pipeline. <clears throat> so first one is uh, maybe you know, is the co computational complexity to compute persistent diagram for point clouds. So indeed, the computation is essentially uh, combinatorial, uh, as I uh, presented before, and the, complex the complexity of naive implementation uh, is uh, n cubed, where n is the number of simplices. So in the case of check or Lips complex, n is equal to uh, two to the power of the cardinality of p minus one, I guess. <clears throat> So the comp its computation is so expensive and easily gets infeasible. <clears throat> and the second one is the sensitivity of persistent diagram to even low level proportion of outliers, which I would like to explain next. So, uh, so the, this is the slide. And uh, also I explain the robustness of persistent diagram with respect to the Hausdorff distance, and they are still, uh, or they are not stable for outliers. Uh, <clears throat> so let us consider a point x, uh, point set x, uh, uniformly sampled uh, in the unit circle S1, like this. Then the, if we generate fast, the first persistent diagram, the Passing down is like this. Uh, this point indicates that uh, there, there is one uh, essential loop here, as you know. So vectorizing it, we get persistent image like this. So if we change one point in X to the point at the, or the origin, as in this figure, and generate a persistence <coughs> uh, diagram. Uh, by the way, I, I, I will denote by GXO the deformed point, point set. Then, recalling that the, how to construct the filtration or persistent diagram, that is, uh, take the union of balls centered at each point, then uh, we easily find that the, the associated persistent diagram is like this. So, uh, this point in persistent diagram move to lower radically, right? <clears throat> so, so, and, uh, so we find that the difference between persistent image, uh, it does not go to uh, zero uh, when and it tend to infinity, right? So the, they are really different <clears throat> to sum up. So the moving a sing only a single point uh, affects persistent diagram and also persistent image radically. So this sensitivity to outlier like this is one of the difficulty in pr practical use in pa of persistence homology. So, so to address the two problems, these two problems, in our recent preprint, we propose a data-driven approach to estimate uh, the vectorization of persistent diagrams by a neural network. So in this approach, uh, a neural network runs the pipeline uh, from points cloud to diagram to persistence Im image or uh, as a vectorization. <clears throat> After training, lips that can estimate the vectorization of persistent diagrams very efficiently. Moreover, we uh, show that the LipsNet has some robustness to outliers, which I will explain next. Okay, uh, here I should remark that 
uh, for image data, uh, there, uh, similar, uh, there is similar work uh, uh, by these people. Uh, <coughs> moreover, at almost the same time, it appears a very similar work that runs persistent homology of 3D point cloud. Uh, and uh, this is actually really hot topic. <coughs> okay, so to implement an architecture uh, to run the pipeline that converts point cloud to vectorization persistent diagrams, we shall use uh, this deep set architecture, which was proposed in 2017. <coughs> so deep sets is a neural network architecture uh, that handles sets of points instead of vectors. <coughs> so that is the input is uh, a set of points x consisting x to xn uh, in Rd instead of just a vector x. So, so since the input is just uh, a set of points, the deep set architecture should be permutation invariant, right? So <clears throat> to realize this property, uh, we implement the deep set architecture as follows. So the first prepare two uh, parametric maps, phi1 to Rd to Rd1, and phi2 Rd1 to Rd2, uh, which are typically implemented with uh, multi-layer perceptrons. So moreover, we uh, take a permutation invariant operator, such as uh, sum or mean or max. Then the deep set uh, structure is implemented uh, like this. That is first apply phi1 to uh, xi's, and then uh, the apply permutation invariant operation uh, to the family of uh, the vectors to aggregate them, and finally apply phi2 to, to get a vector. <coughs> okay, so thanks to uh, this permutation invariant operation, the deep set uh, is actually invariant to any permutation. And it is known that the deep set uh, has the universal approach dimension property when uh, D is sufficiently large. So we use this structure uh, to uh, run uh, persistent diagram. So uh, this is our RIPSnet structure. So fix first fix a vectorization method of persistent diagram, uh, which we denote by PB. And in our preprint, we mainly focus on persistence image and persistent landscape. But uh, the, basically, you, you can use this structure for any a uh, uh, persistent vectorization method. <clears throat> so we use the following function Rn uh, to estimate PB uh, from a point cloud X, the following uh, structure of deep sets, the, the same as deep sets. That is uh, the prepare to MLP uh, function phi1 and phi2 and apply uh, phi1 to X and uh, permutation invariant operation and phi2, right? Then uh, we train uh, Lipsnet Rn, the, this function Rn with uh, genuine persistence vectorization and uh, with l -truth. So in other words, persistence homology it is used only to generate training data in this approach. Then the trained RIPSnet compute the estimate of persistence PB very efficiently and much faster than usual TDA method uh, like this. <clears throat> so this is uh, basically the uh, structure of RIPSnet, very easy. And we shall give you the stability result from now. So we can uh, theoretically prove that Lipsnet uh, has the following robustness to outliers in contrast to uh, persistent image. So we shall describe 
Zarovasness in terms of the one Wasser Stein distance. So for a set of points X in RD, we can associate uh, a probability measure uh, MX uh, that is defined as the sum of Dirac mass, Dirac measure at X side uh, with normalization. Right. <clears throat> so consider Ripsnet function Rn, uh, which is the composition of phi two and the in permutation invariant operation and phi one, where the phi i is assumed to be CI Lipschitz continuous. <clears throat> so then for uh, two points class x, y uh, in RD, the difference between Lipsnet uh, is bounded above by a C1, uh, C2 times uh, the one Wasserstein distance between uh, MX and MI, uh, between the empirical uh, probability measure like this. <coughs> okay, so here we record that uh, the for two measure uh, mu and mu on RD, uh, their uh, one Wasserstein distance is defined as the infimum of the integral value of the distance between x and y uh, over a measure pi, where the pi runs over measures with marginal mu and mu. So from this, for, for this one Wasserstein distance, the moving a fraction lambda in point x, a given point x, only affect uh, this one mass and distance in uh, O lambda, that is linear uh, in lambda. So in particular, uh, moving a single point in X only changes uh, Rn at the most n over one, which is uh, different from persistent image as I presented. <coughs> right, so depending on the, the stability result, this stability result, we can get uh, the following probability stability theorem. So we consider uh, the following noise model. Uh, so we take uh, P and Q uh, probability measures on RD, and given a random point cloud X that follows, follows uh, PI tensored N, N times, we uh, randomly replace uh, a fraction lambda that is n minus k over n of its point by uh, y uh, that follows q. And we denote by the denote by z x y the deformed uh, point cloud. Then uh, we obtain the following theorem that is set dpq to be the expectation uh, of the distance between x and y, x and y over p tensor q. Then uh, we get that the Lipsnet, the integral value of Lipsnet of deformed point and uh, the genuine persistence vectorization uh, over pq is bounded above by lambda uh, c1, c2. c1, c2 is Lipschitz constant of phi1, phi2. Anyway, times uh, dpq plus this, this theoretical uh, risk, right? So the moving uh, point lambda only affect uh, linear in this, in this part. So actually we, we only uh, apply the only or, or the we only split this part by a uh, triangle inequality and just apply the pointwise stability uh, to this term. Then we get uh, this inequality. <clears throat> okay, so in contrast, as we have seen before, that there exist uh, priority measures P and Q such that uh, the, the integral of the difference of persistent image it does not go to zero uh, when ram lambda to tend to zero. So although in, in this case, the theoretical risk, this one is obviously zero because the 
there is no uh, difference between them. So this is a big difference from the positive, usual positive image. So to sum up, we found that the LipNet is robust to outliers like this, so which we expect to be useful in practical use. Okay, so finally, I will uh, present our experimental results. <clears throat> so we ev evaluated our LipNet in classification tasks where we use uh, usual test data, TE, and uh, also noisy test data, TE tilde, we denote. <clears throat> so for synthetic data set, we generate circular point set and uh, consider the task uh, to predict the number of circles. And for real world data set, we use, uh, we consider 3D shape data and the task to uh, predict the shape class. <clears throat> so we train a uh, LipsNet, this LipsNet, uh, with uh, the usual persistent diagram or pass vectorization persistent diagram, uh, and then uh, train classifier uh, with the output LipsNet. And also, the, we compare our LipsNet uh, with the following uh, methods, uh, four methods, basically. So first, usual persistent diagrams, which is computed by a, a open source software, Goody, <coughs> uh, which we denote Goody, like this. And the second one is persistent diagrams with uh, D, what is called DTM filtrations. So this is DTM filtration is was designed to be a more robust outliers. So we compare this one as well. And third one is deep sets and uh, points net, which are neural network architecture that handles of points, a set of points. And finally, topology net, which was proposed very recently. Okay, so uh, this is a result about synthetic data set. So we generate circular uh, point in R2, consisting of 600. Uh, points like this. Then setting the noise level lambda uh, equal to uh, one over three, we generate uh, generated deformed point set like this. So after training LipSnet, the it produces uh, output like this. This is output of LipSnet. So for clean data, it seems to reasonably estimate the genuine persistent image. And moreover, uh, we can see uh, the noise does not affect the output of LipNet so much, and it much more robust than lip persistent image like this. And uh, also, we can see the similar uh, phenomena for uh, persistent landscape. So uh, we use X, uh, XG boost uh, as crash fire. So, and also we compared the LipsNet with also with deep set architecture. This one, uh, where D, DS2 is much, uh, a bit simpler than DS1. So here is a result where the red numbers uh, indicate the best accuracy among topological methods. So as expected, topological method outperform deep set uh, architectures. And Moreover, in noisy setting, this one, ZipsNet outperformed the genuine persistence diagram like this. Okay. So next, the, the real world data set, we use Princeton's uh, models net 10 data set like this, like this. We trained neural network with two fully connected layers as crash fire. So result is, uh, shown in this table. So we can see in clean settings, point net works best, but noise level increase, increases, topological method, topology net, and lips net outperformed point net. So in particular, when the noise fraction lambda is large, uh, the our lips net outperformed uh, the other method. 
Okay, so finally, we show the computational time. So as expected, so computational time, computation of exact computation, exact partition diagram is so expensive like this, <coughs> as in as seen in this table. So in contrast, trained lips net much faster than there, where the two or three orders of magnitude over exact computation. So also from the computational aspect, we expect that LipsNet would be useful in practical use uh, in future. <clears throat> OK, so this is the summary of this talk. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yuchi. OK, so before we um, move to questions, please, if you can, unmute yourself and let's applaud the speaker. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions for our speaker today? Again, you can unmute yourself or you can type the question in the chat. Uh, hi, hi, this is uh, Abe Smith. Um, what are the highest dimensions in, uh, of, of data set and the uh, and degrees of homology that you uh, have run this on. I think I missed that. Ah, yes. So in this, uh, in this experiment, we use 2D uh, point cloud and use only uh, zeros and fast passive homology. And for this um, experiment, we use 3D point set and um, maybe up to two passive homology, I guess. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Maybe where people are thinking, I'll ask some questions myself. Um, so actually, the first question is, can, can you go back a slide? Yes. Uh, yeah, what yeah. was the classification task in, in the, uh, the circle experiment? What was, what was, uh, what was the experiment? This, this one? Oh, no, on the circles, on the first. Uh, circles, uh, we, uh, the number of circles. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So obviously, that topology <laughs> method outperformed yeah. the deep set. Yeah. Also, in this, the noisy setting, uh, our RipsNet uh, works well. Um, I have two more quick questions, if that's OK, and yes. then maybe people. Yeah, One of them sure. is if you can go back to the stability result, the first stability yes. result. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, so if I understand correctly, the stability result works regardless of what the permutation invariant operator mm -hmm. is. Do you have an intuition for, is there a choice of operator that makes this more stable or is it kind of, oh. you get the same stability regardless of what kind of operator that you put in there? Um, that is a that is great, great question. And, uh, uh i have no idea for now <laughs> yeah and the, the also in, in practical use that is experimentally the, we sometimes use different uh, operate, mm. operation operation uh, if i remember correctly for this task we use maybe i forgot the week some 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 operator i guess for this task and also that for this the uh, mean, uh, maybe. So, and uh, so we observed that uh, the for a different task, different operator works. Well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, th this is actually the future work we need to uh, uh, investigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you, you should. <clears throat> um, yeah, and I have one so, more question. So, yes. Oh, sorry. Sure before I let other people uh, talk too. Um, so in, in uh, deep sets, there are these dimensions, right? This dimension that you move up to before applying the operator. What kind of dimensions do you use in these uh, learning tasks? Is it like very high? Like the D1 and the D2, uh, the D1, I mean, particularly. Uh, mm, I forgot the precise, different, precise one, but the, uh, all the mm. 
10, 10 or 100 order, I guess, uh, hmm. in this our experiment. <clears throat> um, not that big, actually. Hmm. Yeah, not that big. So, so, so in, in this sense, the, we do not know that this approximation property it does work, but the, the in practical use, we, uh, yeah, we, we, we get a uh, reasonable result. <clears throat> Okay, thanks for the yes. thanks for Thank answering you. my questions. Is anyone else who would like to uh, ask some more questions? I have some questions. Yes. So um, here, um, phi one and phi two, these parametric maps. Um, mm -hmm. you, you say they're typically MLPs. What are MLPs again? Uh, MLP is the how to say the composition of the uh, linear map uh, or affine map uh, composite with uh, some nonlinear activation function, such as okay. Bell. Yeah, the composition of the multiple uh, such function. Right. And so, so it, then you, this, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, the, in this our experiment, we use the maybe three layer, three or four layers for phi one and uh, for a year for pi two, I guess. And so then um, your your training parameters. Yes. So this pi one and pi two uh, contain training parameter. So during training, we uh, train that parameter uh, using this L two loss uh, to so that the RN estimate PV uh, effectively. And then in this this op function, um, are there any parameters in that that get trained or not? Uh, no, the, this is the, this does not have parameter and uh, adds the yeah yeah so yeah so this op is actually the hyperparameter as I said before the such as the sum or mean or max so uh, we need to add for now. Uh, we need to adjust for this OP for task. Right. And so then if you don't mind going to your stability result. Yes. Um, uh, this one. Yes. Right. So um, I see. So so the phi i's are, are ci Lipschitz, and that, that ci depends on what um, what uh, parameters were trained. Is, is yes. that correct? Sure. I see. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Have you have you sort of um, in some of your trained networks, like on the circle task, have you? Mm -hmm. um, is it possible to check what the what the you know Lipschitz constants are? Uh, that is a great question. <laughs> that uh, it's a bit difficult to check uh -huh. uh, this Lipschitz. I so see. I guess you could test it experimentally, maybe. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. You're right. <clears throat> Cool, cool. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yep. Nice description. Um, any other questions for Yuichi at the moment? Um, you know what, I'm gonna chime in. I have two more questions, if that's okay. Um, so one question is, I just wondered about the training time. So obviously there's these huge speed ups at the end. Is mm. for the experiment, was there a large training time? Because there's sort of three layers. It's a, um, you know, there is a whole network to train. Mm -hmm. uh, training it, it itself is not so hard, but the producing genuine persistence image, persistence vectorization is still task. Mm. That is actually the, the same as the uh, previous approach. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and uh, yeah, the second question, and I think this is kind of just to understand um, the technique. So if I understand correctly, and maybe this is this is, uh, follows from the experiment from the stability results that don't mm -hmm. apply to regular persistence diagrams, is you don't anticipate a method like this is going to do well at predicting random new point clouds, mm -hmm. right? It's it, is it if I understand correctly, it's cure. It makes sense to estimate point clouds for a given data set. But if I showed this network a, um, a random new um, 
like if it, it would probably be hard by this method to train something to estimate random point cloud persistence, especially because that persistence doesn't have the stability that you that you would like in the network. Uh, maybe that wasn't a question. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah, maybe the question is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe the, more precise. The question is yeah. sort of regular ordinary persistence doesn't have this stability, and mm -hmm. regular uh, and and this network does have the stability. So how do you measure accuracy? Let's suppose, yeah, how do you measure accuracy when uh, like it efficiently or or good well approximates the vectorization if you know some percentage of the time it has to be wrong because it's more stable. So how do you measure if it's doing well in terms mm, of efficiency? I see, I see. So, so you're right. So actually, LipsNet does not to, uh, run the topology itself, as you said. <laughs> so so the, the point is that so the, we train the, how to say, uh, ideal uh, point set <laughs> with ideal point set to reduce this empiric, uh, sorry, the theoretical risk uh, is small. Then the, then the, uh, the so we, the lips, then LipsNet only uh, predict uh, the genuine, the ideal uh, point set only. So the, so in this sense, the default point cloud cannot, how to say, the, the topology of the default point cloud uh, cannot be uh, estimated by trained LipsNet. So in this sense, so we uh, uh, the, did this experiment to uh, predict genuine <laughs> that without noise point cloud. So, so, so in the so theoretically, it's a bit difficult to answer your question. So, the, so but practically, the, we uh, mm -hmm. evaluated. To maybe this will, oh. yeah, yes, maybe this will make the question a little bit more precise. So, mm -hmm. what happens if in the training set there is outliers? So, I understand how it can work well where the test data set mm -hmm. you could have you could allow for the presence of outliers, but presumably. Mm -hmm whatever outliers there are in the training set and in the original persistence diagrams that would be built into the rips net and then the rips net would pick up those outliers as well if i understand correctly so the training set has to not to have too many outliers but the test set yes. can have outliers yeah exactly yes yes mm. okay that that answers so, my question thank you yeah yeah so so this actually this theorem uh, the is well your answer because the, we need to reduce this term. So we torrent LipsNet uh, without outlier. Makes sense. Okay, are there any more questions for our speaker from the audience? Um, okay, so if not, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you so much. And then the recording here.